Alex here with an event video on the state of Nevada versus Jamie Mitchell, a case involving a family court lawyer facing criminal accusations in connection with a hit and run, as well as allegations of drug abuse. The Department of Family Services placed her child with her cousin, who sought out a temporary order of protection against domestic violence after a troubling incident that occurred on Thanksgiving. We filed a media request and hearing Master Ilan Rokovitz recused herself, citing third-party observations and an ex parte communication with Ms. Mitchell, turning the case over to District Court Judge Dixie Grossman. Five days later, the child's placement filed an ex parte motion to withdraw her application, conceding that she had only filed it on advice of a CPS worker, suggesting that it could be used to give the school authority to deny Ms. Mitchell the ability to remove her child, and that she had received new advice from the CPS worker suggesting she retract her accusations so that Ms. Mitchell and her child could resume visitation. We also filed media requests in both the Reno Justice Court and Sparks Justice Court, seeking to provide electronic coverage of both criminal proceedings. While Justice of the Peace Scott Pearson granted our request, Justice of the Peace Kevin Higgins denied it, citing an inability to understand what exactly it was the R. Nevada Judges organization was asking of him. Luke Busby sued. The court updated its form and Judge Higgins changed his mind, allowing camera access of the proceedings. I decided to go ahead and link our media request and the judge's response down in the description below to see if any of our viewers had any similar troubles understanding the form that we submitted. The state of Nevada is represented by Deputy District Attorney Jeremy Reichenberg. The defendant is represented by Joey Gilbert. You can keep up to date with our coverage schedule by checking out the media tab on rnevadajudges.com or you can post any questions you have down in the comments below or send us an email at media at rnevadajudges.com. In that instant, you know, the court sort of undoes the Feretta. I no longer wish to represent myself. You know, if, if this all well, I'll pause right there because I'm trying to remember if at the last Feretta or either, I said if you later change your mind, I, I, there's no guarantee I'm going to allow you to uh, have new counsel and vacate the trial date to let him or her prepare, or that I appoint you a free lawyer. Um, if you cannot afford one. I said, no, that, and that was part of the canvas I could call, and I believe Mr. Hanty said to the effect, with full knowledge of that, I'm I'm prepared to represent myself. So right. uh, I seem to recall that uh, as well, as well as the court's sort of interest or uh, keeping its finger on the pulse of, you know, standby counsel should that arise. But typically standby, uh, you know, I. You know, the times I've seen it, which I admit have been rare, standby counsel uh, tends to be more where it's clear a defendant is not following the rules or capable of following either basic rules of filing stuff and sort of procedural stuff as well as courtroom. Um, well, that's not what we have here. We have somebody we don't have here. who believes, who may be now believing that, if you use the phrase I mentioned a moment ago, it might be outdone. Yeah. Right. Although, I mean, let, let, if we took, take a step back, many of these motions, regardless of who's filing them, are not going to be granted. Right? I mean, that's the typical life, speaking frankly, of a, of a criminal case is defense motions filed, most of them not granted, um, and then proceeding to trial. I mean, that's the general scope of things. It's not that, I mean, only the court can assess that, but whether he's outgunned in sort of the legal motions he's filing, there's 